Welcome back, everyone, to HalloweenHawks365.com, the podcast. My name is Jared. Welcome you back for episode two. We run a haunt review website, plus much more, at HalloweenHaunts365.com. We like to keep it the haunt season open all year, so come stop by, like, follow this video. This video can take you right to the website. Tonight, we're with Terry, the co-owner of HalloweenHaunts365.com. Hi, nice to meet you all. And tonight, we have a special guest. He has years of experience acting in haunts. He was also there with us for our Field of Screams media night, and we're going to meet him, and then we're going to do an on-air review for the first time. See how this goes. You can find the written review already up at HalloweenHaunts365.com. And we will introduce Grin. Hello, everybody. What is going on? Grin here. So like we do at HalloweenHaunts365.com is take a scare actor and um, assassinate them with questions. So we're going to take it easy on Grin tonight because we still want to do the review and not have this two hours long. So Grin, let's start off with tell us a little bit about yourself. All right. Uh, most people will call me Grin. Uh, it's my haunt character. I've been doing that probably for eight plus years. Uh couldn't tell you exactly because I've lost track, but uh, I basically am a haunter. Uh, I do a lot of conventions. Um, I used to do a home haunt, uh, did that for a couple of years, went pro, I guess you could say. And uh, yeah, basically everyone knows me as Grin the Creepy Clown, but uh, you can call me Damn Murder. You can call me other names that we cannot probably say on here, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've met Dan our second round of interviews when we went to Bloodshed Farms. And he sat down for probably about an hour answering similar questions that we have now. So you can find them on the website way back when with the cool artwork and everything. Yeah, I got it. I got to uh, go back and reread that because it's been a while. <laughs> Please don't. I read the first <laughs> Field of Screams review and it was horrible. The pictures were bad. The logo was stuck. It was, I went back and because we archived it on the website. So I went back and read a couple of them. Like, wow, I can't believe I got this far. <laughs> it was a fun interview, even though it seems like it was forever ago, but it was fun. Yes. Yeah, that, well, that was definitely awesome to have you guys out there. And, you know, I think that was the uh, the one time where we did the interview on the hate carts, I believe. And, uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. That, that was awesome. Yeah. I have a question for you. Okay. How did your love for Halloween start? And how old were you? Wow. So I would probably say since I was born. Uh, my parents, basically, they were big time Halloween people. Um, they kind of started doing a, I guess you would say a home haunt uh, on our porch. And uh, I was probably about five years old and I was fascinated with it at that time. And uh, I was like, oh my God, I, I want to I hide in that corner and jump out of people because I've never <laughs> seen people scared like that before. I'm like, this is nuts. And at five years old, I, I got hooked because of my parents. So that's pretty much where it started. And That's then awesome. all downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Were they clowns? No, not then. Uh, basically, the clown thing started was was a birthday thing, like probably most of us back in like the 80s. And uh, I had a clown at my party. I'm like, oh, my God, it's so cool. And it just went from there. That's cool. Yeah. When did you start officially haunting? Officially? I mean, I guess I probably wouldn't consider I don't know if you consider the five-year-old scaring out of a corner of a, of a porch, but uh, probably, I think like 10 years ago professionally. But I mean, I've been haunting as a home haunter for a long time, for a very, very long time. 
um, you know, we, we, me, it was me and the ex, uh, we, were, we were really going hard on it. We literally gutted our house. We, we were almost not, not living. Uh, the only livable room we really had was our bathrooms, um, our two bedrooms, and our kitchen. Uh, we gutted the whole house, built pallet walls in the house. I mean, carrying groceries was just terrible. <laughs> but, uh, we did that for a long time and outgrew ourselves quickly and we had to quit. It was just too much. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's, it's been a process. It's a, it's, a, it's a lifestyle, I suppose, that I can't quit. It's addicting. Oh yeah. Uh, what are some of your major builds that were your pride and joy? Hmm. Um, I would probably say, other than the home haunt, because I mean, I probably started building four months in advance. Other than that, I would say probably bloodshed. It went from the funhouse of fear. Uh, I took, I kind of took over and we revamped it and turned it into the clownophobia and made it like five times bigger, more scares, more extreme. And, uh, that was my pride and joy until it got torn down the other year, because I don't, I don't know if you guys, I think you, I think I told you guys, but, uh, you know, we basically lost a, a bunch of land, which is why, uh, bloodshed farms keeps doing the drive through, which hopefully will change next year. But uh, unfortunately, that had to get torn down. But that was my pride and joy. Yeah, it's the only I like. I like clowns, but every haunted attraction has clowns. So how many clown walkthroughs can you do? So when I went through yours, I started enjoying them again. To be straight up, I mean, it, it was crazy getting lost in that last room because you had no idea how you were getting out. The, the makeup was second to none. It was, it was easily my favorite clown walkthrough, and I've been through a lot. Well, I, I, I really appreciate that. I mean, I, I got to say, I got to give a little bit of credit to uh, Creamy Acres. Uh, we went there one year, and I lost my mind. This was years ago, many, many moons ago, but uh, they just had so many crazy things I just never seen before. And I, I just, uh, it just went crazy. I, I went to the drawing board as soon as I got home. I started sketching stuff. I'm like going to Clark the, and Jim, the owners of Bloodshed. I'm like, we got to do this. We got to do that. They're like, we only have so much money. I'm like, no, 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 no. Listen, we have to do this. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen that place in the last two years? I have. I have. I've you... lost my mind even more. And I... yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It was I you I was telling you about where I had that same idea, but if we added like NES villains, like how Mike, like Jason Voorhees is like purple in the Nintendo games, yeah. and have that in a 3D room, and then you have you know the orange and pink Freddy Krueger in another room, oh, and just yeah. like all the weird Nintendo, I think that thing would would kill from the nostalgia aspect. And everything. It was just an idea I had when I was walking through there. Because I don't know how they did that. They they must have been painting for a year. <laughs> oh yeah. And then you know, spoiler alert. You know, they basically bought out a friggin' Chuck E. Cheese. Like, are you kidding me, man? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They they killed it. Yeah. Um, we're gonna take a little break from the haunted attractions for a couple questions because. We also like to delve into horror. That's what started my fascination with all this. I've been fascinated with um, Freddy Krueger for a long time. I wonder if I can take this backdrop off real quick so I can show you. Um, there we go. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Yeah, there's a real Freddy glove up at the top over there. Yeah, all eight pushes on this wall. It's an office work in progress. That's why I have the background up. But some of these toys were only on the shelf for a week until the parents got pissed. And it's just a collection I'm constantly building. That looks awesome. That looks great. Then um, 
yeah, so I, I like to cover the horror. Once we get into the off season and then we're not doing review, 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 I definitely want to get back into um, online uh, movie reviews, talk to people who really like certain movies, argue with certain people that like certain movies. I think it's just be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. So what is your favorite horror movie? Favorite horror movie? Uh, man, there's so many. It depends on my mood, I guess. But I mean, normally I would probably say Halloween 1978, the original. Always a classic. The first time you hear that music, the music stood the test of time. They're yep. still using it. I still use it. Everyone still uses it. It's a good movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that and basically anything... Uh, Rob Zombie, I love. I'm a big uh, House of a Thousand Corpses fan. Me that, would too. My, that would be my probably my runner up. I love it. Yeah, it's it was. I love the movies where you feel like you need to take a shower afterwards. Oh yeah. And I'll always watch that and The Devil's Rejects, and then I'll argue with myself which one I like better because it changes every time I watch each movie. Yeah. Just because I they're agree. so they're. They're so intense, and the acting is actually really good. Some people have a problem with Sherry Moo Zombie. I think she did. In that movie, she was fantastic. Yeah, I agree. Uh, there was, I, I, I mean, he, he's done a couple crappy movies, I would say. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, I'm, for the most part, a diehard zombie fan, but uh, I think her acting is pretty good. I don't, I don't know why so many people harp on her. I think, I think she does good. She's, you know, she's got the sex appeal. She's got fairly decent acting I, I don't know why right. or where that that came from but i i enjoy her i got gotcha. you i have a question for you okay uh do you have a top horror villain top horror villain other than michael <laughs> i love michael myers i'm anything michael myers I mean, if I had to have a, a runner-up, it would probably be Leatherface. Oh, okay. I like both of them. Yeah. They're pretty cool. Terry, who's your favorite horror film? Well, we know it's not Jason. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I don't do Jason. Don't like it. Do, you so have do I have a favorite? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's hard to say. I always liked Freddy Krueger, so I it's either him or Michael Myers. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. So I I love I love Freddy Krueger. Um, I never got to meet him as like a, uh, like a, did, I never did a photo op with him or an autograph. Never got a chance to do it. But um, I was at Monster Mania in Cherry Hill and sitting at the bar, of course, and I'm having a drink and in walks Robert Englund. Oh, my God. I would have had a stroke. He's standing like three people down from me. I mean, I don't know who's not scared of Freddy Krueger. But that gave me the chills right away. I was like, holy shit, that's Freddy Krueger. I couldn't even talk to him. Like, there's no way. I drank my beer and left. <laughs> uh, I would have humped his leg. I would have <laughs> just grabbed him. He would have came with me. We would have had a nice little discussion. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't have been able to control myself. I don't get starstruck. No, I've, met a lot of, I've met a lot of celebrities. I grew up in Atlantic City. So running into people was just something that happened. I think I would get starstruck over two people. Robert England and Tiger Woods. Other than okay. that, I'm good. But those two, I don't, I don't even know. Like, I, I'd have to talk to them, but I don't know what I would. So I was just probably like, hey, I like you. It, you look fun. And uh, I don't remember my name or why I'm here. Like, that's, that's, I do need to meet him at Cherry Hill one of these years. And I need to start, stop putting it off because, I mean, I have enough stuff for him to sign. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. But I'll get there. We need to get there. Yeah, I, I don't get starstruck, never have, but uh, that, that threw me through a loop. Wow. Oh, man, I, I wish that was my story. <laughs> <laughs> it would have ended differently with arrest and restraining yeah, orders, right. but hey, that's all right. Uh, the What's your favorite horror franchise? 
man, um, to give a different answer, I would probably say I really enjoy the Saw series a whole lot. If you, if you want to consider that one, I would say Saw. I really no, I mean, it, it continues a path. I like the path that it follows. I was talking to, can you guys still hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. I was talking to one of the Monster Mania groups or whatever. I just had always had the idea. I really wish the wife took over because okay. I really liked her in it. I really liked her acting. And yep. she just had that evil look where I would have been okay if she was behind the rest of the movies. And then we didn't find out until Jigsaw. That would have been awesome. Yeah. They started that, a little bit of that, I think in seven, but then erased it in eight. I might be wrong with the names, but I saw a little bit of that when they were when she tried to kill the detective who took over all the killings. Right. Yeah. I always wanted that to happen with Saul. But other than I, I enjoyed it. I mean, the guy yeah. is a great actor, even though he's not really your Jason or Freddy because you don't really see him, but the right. parts he does play, I love that series. Oh yeah. Terry, what's your favorite horror franchise? I'd have to go with um, Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy Krueger. Yep. I like that, but the Conjuring series is growing on me. Yes. I mean, I love one. Two, I didn't like at the start, but I watched it again, and I can get over that horrible animation of the Slender Man guy. <laughs> that, that killed it for me for the first watch. Annabelle 1 was okay, but then the animals got really good. Yeah. This third one was good. It just went a little too fantasy. Okay. Like them saving each other on the cliff. Like, what was that? You had a good movie going. We didn't need that. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen the third one. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll leave that out for you. But, I mean, it's just it's gearing up to be really good, and I've enjoyed it. And I really liked Insidious. Yeah. Those four movies, they they were fantastic. So, I mean, it just shows that franchises can come back. Grin, do you have um, a favorite haunted attraction? Um, I would probably say it would have to be it's it's close it's a close tie with field of screens because basically they're my second family and um reaper's revenge uh, like I, I go back and forth one year i say my favorite is field and then the next year it's reapers and it goes back to field again like field we, we just did field and uh they they killed it they killed it their actors are nuts and they they added so much stuff i mean it, it's it's hard to, to pick between the two but i i love them both yeah, yeah. I, go ahead I, I definitely agree with that because I was going back and forth with the uh, Field of Screams and then Reapers. And we've only been the Reapers once so far. Yeah. I, I almost feel like like the people at, at Field talk to the people at Reapers and, and then, you know, they set the bar one year and then they just, they, they just keep going back and forth to outdo each other and it's just, it's crazy. Yeah, uh, and I, I have the same conversation. It's always, I'd like to start the season with this, you know, a, um, a clear slate. Who can win? Who's yeah. going to be my favorite home of the attraction? Yep. And it always ends up with three. Field of Screams, Reaper's Revenge, and Brightness Island. They, I... they always end up in my head as the most memorable one. I'll, I'll find an attraction here and there that really sticks to me. But the night out, I remember from all the haunts we do, even the ones coming in remotely, it's just, it's those three all the time. It's, those are the three I think about in um, February when I'm yeah. dying to get to a haunt. I'm like, wow, man, I remember when Brighton did this. or Man, I remember a field, the hayride, they had that. I just want to get back out there. Like, yeah. I'll remember other attractions and places and the people, but those three really stand out to me. 
Yeah, unfortunately, I haven't been to Brighton in a very long time. I've only been there once, and it was so long ago, and I just hear such great things. So I'm hoping to make it out there this year. They, they, they do such a great job, and I would put his scenes up to Reaper's and Field, like the wow. entire walkthrough. And yeah. each walkthrough is long. Like, I think Brighton Asylum is about a – you're in there about 10 minutes. Okay. For a walkthrough, that's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, like, Field has a great job of – it's not that long, but it feels that long. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yes, it does. But, yeah. That's, been, that's, that's saying a lot. If you're going to compare them to those two haunts, well, they, yeah. they must have really stepped it up big time. And that's without a hayride, which is one of my favorite things to do because I can just sit down and look at haunted stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, agreed. Now, on that, if you could visit any haunt in the country or past the country, which one would it be? Wow, um, I would, I would like to say House of Shock, but I believe they're the ones that shut down a couple years ago, maybe. I could be wrong, but I think they shut down. I don't think they're around anymore, but they were really known to be extreme. Um, I've always wanted to go there. I've always wanted to go to the Haunted Hoochie. Yeah. And what was the third one that I want? Uh, Haunted Overload. I've always wanted to go there as well. They're like my top three. Yeah, so far we're uh, heading up there at some weekend. We can pull yeah. this out. I know we have this weekend's light because nobody's really open. I mean, there's a couple, but we're going to see what happens. Then the following weekend, we have three planned. So I'm thinking possibly by the, the middle of October, we might be able to head up there. Okay. We uh, interviewed Nikki, as everyone saw on the last one. She was great. She told us a lot about it. And just the pictures alone, it, it blows you away. Let alone oh, yeah. to throw actors in there. It's going to be It's going to be out of this world. Yeah. Terry, what haunt, what's your dream haunted attraction visit? I think I would like to get out to California and see the Queen Mary. I've heard, you know, so much about it. I, I got bad news for you on that one. Go I think ahead. it's, I think it's done. Oh, really? I, we were, we did the media night before COVID, as you know. And no one is getting back to me from there. Wow. Uh, and uh, the, one of the reps who work there is also working for Temecula Terror, uh, Bloodshed Brothers production that they just started this year. She emailed me about Temecula, and I'm like, wait a minute. You were the contact I had for um, the Queen Mary uh, Harbor uh, haunt. And she's like, yeah, I don't, we don't think they're doing it this year, and the ship's in trouble. so. It might be done. That's oh, a shame. It is because that was it was a very big haunted attraction. I've never I've actually never even heard of it. But I mean I don't really pay too much attention to California because I've never been. Yeah. <laughs> Probably won't for some time, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I I, 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 haunt, I I'd love to visit a haunt in Cali, but going to Cali is a whole other story for me at this point. Yeah. <laughs> there every other month. Yeah, I've spent really enough crazy. time in Cali. So how about you? Where, where do you want to go, Jared, if you could? <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, I have a list. <laughs> yes, you do. I want to go to Arebus in Detroit. Okay. It's neck and neck for the longest haunted attraction in the country. And if I'm right or not getting my stories crossed, which I could because I read a lot about this stuff, is he started as a home haunter who got too big. And then he made it pro and went extremely successful i'd love to see some of the stuff he's done there i want to see the dent schoolhouse i want to see uh headless horseman um haunt overload it would be one of them um headless horseman that's new york right yeah it's uh it's it's i think it's orange county new york okay yeah i've heard about i heard really good things about it too that would, that'd be neat to check out sometime 
yeah, those are those are my tops. Um, I'd love to do HHN Hollywood one time just to see if yes. the feel of that is different. And definitely like not scary farm is another giant attraction park like um, uh, HHN. And that's apparently where the sliders originated from. Oh, okay. I read that in an article at some point. But uh, yeah, it's uh, another huge amusement park attraction like Disney and all that. In the normal time, I think they're not Berry Park. Yeah, they, that sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's huge. And it, that'd be worth the trip to Cali for me. Yeah, there's still so many I, I, I need to check off my list locally. Like, I still <laughs> haven't been to Kim's Crypt. I haven't been to Devil's Playground yet. There's still so many that I'm working on. <laughs> it's just hard being a haunter or, you know, oh, yeah. doing, doing what I do. With, it's no time. Yep. Terry, you want to ask him the last question before we head into the haunt review? Okay. So you said that you had your own haunted attraction, the home haunt. Do you see yourself one day doing that again? Um, oof. Where I'm living now, no. It's not really set up well. I would like to do it again. But uh, probably not. I mean, if, if anything, I would love to maybe be like part owner one day with someone or under someone else's belt, but I don't want to own my own haunt. I see how much, you know, the owners from Bloodshed go through. I'll just talk about them just alone. The, the amount that they have to go through with permits and scouting land and just it's all such a nightmare. I give them so much credit that people don't even realize what it takes. So no, I never want to have my own haunt. <laughs> it's a lot of work. It's insane. Like like us, like I like I, I do a lot of set design and uh, that alone, you know, I'm doing that well, was I, I took this year off, but I was doing it year all, all year long and I, I never stopped. So, you know, to, to not only do that, but what they're doing is it's too much. I give them a lot of credit. I have one last question. And what did you win that giant check in the back for? <laughs> yeah, I was that's, gonna ask that. <laughs> that's my uh, Six Flags coffin challenge. That was, uh, I guess, two years ago. I forget. But yeah, that was 30 hour coffin challenge at uh, Great Adventure. And you did that in costume, right? No, I thought about it and I'm glad I didn't because it was hell. Oh, I mean, imagine. Back, back spasms alone, it, it was terrible. I mean, it was nice. We got breaks and whatever, but still, my back was killing me. 30 hour <laughs> coffin? Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. You deserve a big ass check for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. People are talking to me like, why the hell did you do it? I'm like, you know, because we got to keep the check and what you don't see is I'm actually staring at the coffin in the other corner across the room. But uh, they're like, why did you do it? Because, you know, as you, I don't know if you'd see, but it's $300. I'm like, well, it's not obviously for the money. I want the big ass check to put on my wall. <laughs> That's all I want. That's all I cared about. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. Well, last Friday, last Saturday, my apologies, we got to visit Field of Screams. We got to go through all the attractions with the VIP pass and really take our time to see everything. I love going there for our, my first part of the season because it's not, I mean, it gets busy at night, but we're usually done by the time it gets busy. So you can really take your time looking at everything. Like, you walk through about the same speed I walk through, which is a crawl. So we're sorry for holding up your uh, output and input. But, hey, <laughs> I love it. So the first thing we did was we hopped on the hayride once it got dark. I'll start with what I thought, and then you two can carry on after. My hayride experience I absolutely loved it. The actors were in high spirits. 
every scene the actors were where they needed to be one room was a little off kilter but it could have been a break but even the actor in there was full on slamming stuff screaming in your face and the effects were enough to carry that scene the Cairo, the cryo scene is what I'm talking about yeah the every scene you can tell that they changed something something got bigger especially my favorite scene of that hayride was the where they treated like you were at the Wildwood Boardwalk and trying to uh, pick you up with giant <laughs> ball machines. Yeah, that was crazy. I yep. know. I know. Yeah, it it's funny. They talk about all this, like, oh yeah, we did this to the den, whatever. They never mentioned the hayride. The hayride was insane. That scene alone, like, took it. It, yeah. it was amazing. Absolutely and- amazing. With the fire and the crane, three cranes going crazy, you just didn't know where to look. It was a sensory overload. And I'm noticing they're working on that a lot more with one of the other rooms we'll get to later. It's just, it's almost too much for your brain to handle. So you don't know what to look at. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then um, the props are always top of the line. Fear factor, it's hard for me to judge fear factor. So I'll watch other people, and we had people in our cart jumping out of the cart. <laughs> so <laughs> for the actors, I'm going five blood splats, as you can tell from the written review, because they were all on. Oh, yeah. I, I'm not going to dock actors if one scene was missing a couple, because that's it, it's going to happen. People yeah. need breaks, and I go through enough where, I mean, the actors were doing their jobs. Scenes, I'm going five blood splat just because everyone seemed bigger and better than last year. Oh, yeah. And especially the cranes. It's just that the whole scene is, you don't need a single actor in that scene because you're not going to notice them anyway. You know what's funny? I don't remember if they had an actor in there. I was just going to say the same thing. I don't remember any actor there. There was, was... There was one. I don't, well, there might have been more, but I remember one because he was right behind me. Uh, saying something about if they can get you in the last one, we're going to get you here. So I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I, the entire scene, I just like had my mouth open, just staring up at the sky. <laughs> like, I don't believe this is happening. That yeah, was it was incredible, that scene. And, and the rest were just, just as good. It's it, They do such a good job there with time management and the low times and the high times and unexpected times it's just it really always there's always one or two hay rides that really stick out and it's there and reaper's revenge i think field wins the production on that i haven't been the reapers this year but reapers brings out the nostalgia yeah it really does every we'll talk more about that later but every scene is right out of my childhood Yep. And that just, it pulls on heartstrings. And watching um, Payson Voorhees jump on a cart and give my wife um, anxiety is always hilarious. <laughs> Funny. I was scared shitless. <laughs> Originality is an important one for us because you see a lot of the same stuff and a lot of the same parts. A lot of them copy some do it better, some don't. But I don't see a lot of copying coming out of Field of Screens. I mean, they have an asylum. Everyone has asylum, but they don't have that asylum. Because <laughs> it might say Frightmare Asylum, but there's only a couple rooms that feel like an asylum. And then the rest just takes your dreams and <laughs> devastates you. <laughs> so for the Hayride, I'm five blood splats across the board for my overall. Yeah, I, I, I had no complaints. I, I mean, from beginning to end, it was flawless. All the actors were on point, props were on point. There was more, like, I couldn't believe, like, I, I think it was probably two years since I've been there. But uh, just in the two years, they, they updated so much. I couldn't believe what, they, what they've what done in that little bit of time. And then they don't even advertise it. They don't even advertise it. Like, ah, oh, yeah, drop in the hat. Nah, it's fine. <laughs> like, oh, my God, they had, like, big life-size props. Like, are you kidding you don't even advertise for this? It was it was amazing. 
Yeah, when I talked to Jim, he told me, oh, Dan, 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 a little frightener. He didn't say anything about putting a whole basically brand new scene in the hay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know the scene was there before, but the add-on makes it seem like it's brand new. Yeah, I don't know if they did that intentionally, but I'm glad that they didn't advertise it, so oh, it was yeah. a nice surprise. Well, he, uh, he's always good to leave stuff out, which I'm fine for, because I don't need everything. Yeah, I, Our fans don't need everything. Our fans need to go. I don't right. know. I, like, when we did the Reaper's Revenge um, behind the scenes, they let us pull out the camcorders and record the entire thing. No, I'm not doing that. I want uh, to fill your seats. I, yeah. I give them everything. There's no reason for them to come. Yeah, they but, actually did. They, they were just posting all these videos of behind the scenes. I was so disappointed they posted because it's like, I don't know how many people have been there. And it's just like they're giving away like one of the best things that they do. One of my favorite scenes, which I'm not going to say. If you want to go spoil and look, go for it. But I couldn't believe they, they posted the, the clips of that. I, I was disappointed. But Yeah, and like I, luckily... There was a couple other review groups there that just enjoyed the show. So I was happy to see that they didn't film it to try and get the views on the website or their YouTube or all that. Like when I go this year, I'm going to make a clip video and pull it all together, maybe make it about a half hour long for the YouTube channel. But I don't want to do it inside of attractions. I want to do it outside. Little oh, clips yeah. of the hayride, but not the scene. Little clips of the uh, carnival, but not the scene. But I'm going to bring it back into Field of Screams because that originality at Field of Screams, I love it. I love going there. I love that that's the first haunt every year. Terry, what did you think about the Hayride? I loved it. I'd have to say, though, this was the first year that you didn't, I didn't get a scare. And I'm usually good for one screen. I didn't. But the actors were all great. The props... I mean, all around, it's an awesome hayride. They do a really good job. So how many blood splats are you giving that? I would go five all, all the way down. Okay, five all the way down. All right. So after the hayride, we took a little rest, let our legs wake back up because I know my foot was asleep. <laughs> <laughs> then yep. we headed into uh, Frightmare Asylum. Frightmare Asylum for me is always in the running for attraction of the year because, like, I do a haunt of the year and then attraction of the year because there's some really good attractions at some haunts that don't really bring it all. So I'd like them to have a chance to, you know, stand out. Like, um, I'm trying to think of one, but really all the haunts have a chance. Um, we'll take Shocktoberfest. I love some of theirs. Don't really care for some of theirs. So Prison of the Dead is an outstanding haunted attraction, and I would put it up against a ton of others. But Frightmare Asylum, I look forward to running into every year. Just the look of the facade, the smells inside, every room is a new nightmare. The props are out of this. It's the closest I'm getting to a movie set for a horror movie. I, I Just every turn is something awesome. I know you really like the first room walking into that. And I really like the uh, fireplace scene where um, it was off to the left and it just kept loading like into a fake fire that really blew me away I, I really like that and they use a they do a good job with noises in their attractions and sounds and creepy music i mean for me frightmare asylum was five blood, sh blood splats across the board i i could talk about that place forever but i'm gonna let you guys talk for now i um I liked everything about it. It was, again, I didn't get scared, which was really surprised. Uh, but I would give it a five all the way. 
Yeah, I'm going to agree. Uh, it would be five all the way. Absolutely. I mean, the smell, Just I love the smells. I, uh, that That's one of the things I feel like field kind of sets themselves apart with others. Just the smells is like the one thing you always look forward to. It's absolutely just horrendous. Half the smells are just terrible. But, uh, you know, one of, one of the things I love is you, you go to field of screens and one of the things I like to look at is, for instance, the guy in the first room. I already told him he's my favorite. He did such a killer job. But uh, you go in, he does it, he's acting like a total lunatic, lunatic. You go around the corner, but I stayed at that corner where he couldn't see me and I kept watching him when no one was in the room. He continued to act with no one in the room. I mean, that's when you know you have good actors. So I kept doing it. If, if you can, if, if you ever get an opportunity to look back and see if they continue to act and stay in character, they all stay in character, especially him. And he's just freaking out and try to staple himself with a stapler and just doing all this crazy stuff. Like, man, this guy's really freaking nuts. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I love this to always like watch the actors, see if they break, see, see if, you know, they think you left the room, but really you didn't and you're spying on them and they're, they're still doing it like that. They have such a great team there. I, I love them. Yeah. The, um, the young lady in the nurse's costume with the stapler. She cracked me up. She had that little giggle and came after you with the stapler. That was oh, yeah. funny. Yeah, she, she was really she was, good. She was hidden well in a white dress. Like that was great. And I, I've I've seen her there a thousand times. And I, I actually talked to her on Instagram. We're gonna have her on soon. But she she always stood out to me. Oh yeah, I think I think uh, that girl. My wife was saying uh, cheeks. She was saying that I think she lives like in the same town as us. And I had no idea that. She oh, lived. yeah, I know she's near Philly or somewhere in that area, but I, I don't even, I don't even know her name yet. But we'll meet her on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So after um, after Frightmare, we decided to go back into another hot, hot building before we did Nocturnal Wasteland to cool off. Now, where was I'm going to give out? I'm going to give out a big deal here. Where, which asylum, which attraction had the square room with the lights and the um, the slow strobe? I thought I thought that was Den. No, that was Darkness of the um, the Den. Den. Okay, Den, Den, Den of Darkness. Den, yeah. Den of Darkness. <laughs> That's still. Is still creeping me out because with the slow strobes, a you don't know where you're going. You can't see. You can't see, and there's a fence in front of you that keeps shifting because of the slow strobes. That right. was one of the my favorite effects of this year so far. Yeah, so, I, I, I would I would agree. I I if if I'm not mistaken, I'm not giving anything away as much as I try not to, but I feel like for the most part the room was basically open yeah and you yeah. can't get from one side to the other like what the hell <laughs> yeah it was one of the longest rooms but it was the smallest room with just one little obstacle to get through and we're all like yeah what is going on and then it started and, tilting because of the strokes doors there was a couple doors there so you weren't sure which way to go ah okay i didn't uh, see any doors i was just looking at the strobes like <laughs> yeah i think i think i was following you guys so i was just watching where you walk so i just followed you <laughs> it, it, it is it is then because... it's like i don't know where i'm going <laughs> and it is then because right after that room enter the bug room that feels like you're stepping on the bugs because yeah. of the gravel so it, yeah. it is then yep that's right yeah, that, that bug room is another creeper room because you don't know where you're walking on. You were just walking on a hardwood floor a second ago. <laughs> yeah, I, I wish they still, they used to in the bug room, they used to have a thing overhead that would drop bugs all over you. I don't ah. know if you recall that or not, but that was awesome. Wow. Oh. I don't know if I remember that. Yeah, yeah. They, had some, they had something overhead that was dropping stuff on you. And man, that flipped me out the first time. <laughs> oh. No. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. But yeah, I mean, Dead of Darkness, you can really see the changes they made all through the attraction. I got to see some of it during the St. Paddy's Day um, 
special that they had. And going through that haunt while listening to the Dropkick Murphy still will always be one of my favorite haunt experiences. Because I'm getting into the music, just, oh, that's awesome. This song kicks ass. Oh, look at that. It was just <laughs> all around awesomeness. And I had such a good time there. I, I, I thanked him up and down. I'm like, listen, during the season, a little drop kick can't hurt anything. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. So then the darkness, I'm going to give another five blood spots because the rebuilds were great. The actors were great. Um, the scenes were awesome. The props were fantastic. The smells, again, that they perform in these old farmhouses amazes me. I, I really want to see that machine that puts them out because it, I'm sure it's big. <laughs> yeah, I've never, I've never seen them. I think I've asked, but I, I don't think I've ever been shown. I, I think, you know, Jeremy and Andrew, the guys that kind of do a lot of that. And unfortunately, you know, Jeremy just passed recently, but uh, I'd always try and get them to show me anything I possibly could because I want to learn, you know what I mean? That's yeah. what it's all about because I, I don't get how they do what they do, but maybe some, some things are left to be unknown. It's better. <laughs> I could be completely wrong on this, but I remember running into a YouTube video and I was shown that they're fed through little plastic tubes, a little droplet at a time. That could be completely wrong, but that's what I saw so far. Yeah. Uh, who I don't know how you smell a room from a tube, but... <laughs> what do I know? I, I make a podcast. <laughs> but on Den of Darkness, I'm five blood splats across the board. I loved it again. This is my hardest year to pick a favorite attraction, but I think I have to finally get to one at the end of this. But we'll keep going. Terry, you get, we... you get your exercise too in there. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Your, your knees are hurting. <laughs> Your knees are hurting. You gotta make sure everything stays in your pockets, all that good stuff. So now we're gonna move on to Nocturnal Wasteland. This was always my opinion of Feel the Screams weakest link. I'm fully wrong on that comment that. <laughs> I, I will agree with you back in the day it, it was when it first came out it was kind of like it was cool it was cool like that's where you got like all right now when you're walking up those stairs and there's fire all around you and however they built that walkway i'll never figure out even when i'm standing on it, it it's the acting this year was better than the last the props grew, the scenes grew. Um, hold on to the railing in the last move in the last room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some big guy might have went almost went down, but that's okay. I was ready for it. <laughs> but I mean it's 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 growing on me year after year after year. I, I'm I was I'm looking forward to it next year now. Like, I may want to go through that first now. I mean, to me, I do it last because it's a chance to cool off after being in the, the attics of the 1800 farmhouses. It gets really hot really quick. But Nocturnal for me this year was hands down five blood splats across the board. And <coughs> excuse me, it's in the running for my favorite attraction of Field of Screams this year. Yeah, I, I got to agree. Me too. They do an awesome job. Yeah, I don't know how they do what they do and what permits they have to fill out because obviously Jersey is crazy where I work, but uh, I, I appreciate all that they go through because it's almost like you, you're walking next to fire. Like, I hope this thing's rigged up right, man, because holy shit. <laughs> He's got flames shooting all over the place like oh my god this is kind of dangerous <laughs> yeah uh, i mean they because they, I mean, they are walking through it oh yeah <laughs> yeah they they do a lot with fire at field screens from the hayride explosion at the oil bear the whiskey barrels to the random flames sitting around you know nocturnal wasteland and one of them is really close to that walkway <laughs> <laughs> it, it's amazing I, I i loved it 
I had a great time. I'm five blood splats for all four attractions. Giving Field the screams. Surprise, surprise. A five blood splat overall. Grin, where do you see Field? We'll get into the other stuff Field of Screams has to offer, but I want to see what you two think about the final overall score. 100% five across the board. No doubt. They did it. They did an amazing job. Terry? Me too. I would say five across the board. Five across the board. Yeah, it's funny when we get the. Um, when we get the reviews with the five overalls, I get, oh, they paid them. Really? They did? Where's that? Where's that? Oh, they, they give everyone five. Do I? <laughs> That's new. No. Yeah. Every, every, you know, every five I've given is deserved hands down. Yeah. And, you know, haters are going to hate, and that's fine. But Field of Screams is a must see for 2021. It was a must see for 2020. It was a must see for 2019, and so on. If, if you're in the haunts, if you want a fun night out, you need to get the Field of Screams. And what I like about the place is if you don't like being scared and you just want to just eat and just hang out at the picnic benches, you can do that. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's nice. You can uh, just hang out, play games and, uh, you know, make a night of it. That's what it's all about. Yeah, that's what that's one of the biggest things we look for is what else is there to do? Like, I have small children. I can't bring them there yet. I'm hoping maybe next year. I keep saying maybe next year. But really, if we just wanted to go grab some food, watch clowns chase people around, do an escape room, do, you know, games, buy a coffee mug, a free photo booth. Feel the Screams has it all. It's got a great midway. It's a fun night out. We had, we took a friend of ours two years ago, and she doesn't even like horror movies. Uh, Stacy, Stacy made it through the hayride, buried in her husband buried deep into his shirt and broke down in tears she was done for the night she actually ended up hanging out with jim all night telling him how scared she was <laughs> and yeah it was uh even then i mean even someone that can't handle it there's other stuff to do so the rest of the family can enjoy it i mean when we were there we watched uh, a family exit out the emergency exit because they were done I think yeah. that was a uh, frightmare, right? Yeah, yeah the top of the column. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, there's other stuff for everyone to do there. And it's always like that. And everyone has such a good time from the, the cast to the volunteer workers. Even the, the guy that does the head toss has been there every year we've been there. Yeah. And they're volunteers. So, I mean, like, he keeps coming back. He, he's got to be having a good time. And you feel that family vibe throughout that entire haunt. And that's rare in a haunt. There's a couple out there. But Feel the Screams, it's, I always look forward to it because I know I'm going to have a good time. I know everybody's going to have a good time. And I'm going to watch people, you know, shit their pants. Oh, yeah. And it happened all night long. And it, the best part is watching – you know, the owners sit there and laugh at everyone getting scared. because <laughs> That means they love what they do. And I know both of them work entirely extra hard all season long to really step up the game of everything. And it shows. And it's, it's a repeat customer heaven for that reason. Yep. So, I mean, for 2021, Field of Screams can't be beat for a night out if you're in the area if you're not in there i, I mean we drive two and a half hours I mean, we're happy to do it <laughs> yeah it, almost two hours yeah i mean it's it's worth it it's totally worth it so for me we're gonna go over each other's favorite attraction now 
My favorite of the night, believe it or not, was Nocturnal Wasteland. Just something about it that night. Maybe the actors are in the right spot. Even though the Tesla coil wasn't up, which is devastating every time I don't get to see that Marvel. I'm sure they have their reasons. But Nocturnal Wasteland was my favorite of the night. And I never thought the seven years of going there I would say that. But I just said it. Because I've been thinking about it since we left. <laughs> so, uh, Terry, what was your favorite attraction of the night? I like Den of Darkness. Den of Darkness? Okay. Grin, I, what you got? I'm going to have to say it was the Asylum. They, 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 they did it for me, man. They, they really did. They went above and beyond. And uh, my hack was off to them. Uh, just working in both, both Dan and all of them, really. But those those two houses are so hot. But uh, Asylum killed it. They're they're all friggin' nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I felt that there were more actors in Asylum this year than most, and we yes. knew why. But it, it really worked in there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it did. And they did a they did a great job, and everyone from the you know the Midway Entertainment to the you know the random costume guy just scaring the groups with tickets just everybody did an amazing job this year and and honestly i can't wait to go back (laughs) i'm really hoping they do a march so i can have a reason to go up this year well that's our review of field of screens now i'm gonna let grin plug his social media anyone he wants to talk about any shout outs he wants to give the floor is yours sir Oh, awesome. Um, I mean, first off, you know, I got to say thank you to uh, Jim and Gene for having us out. You know, Breezy B, Crunk, Bonjo, all those guys. Uh, thank you. You guys all killed it in the midway. Thank you again for having us out. Um, shout out to Bloodshed Farms. Check them out this year. Um, they are loosening up a lot of rules. Uh, from what I'm hearing is windows down. Um, if your doors are unlocked. Who knows what might happen while you drive through. I'm not saying anything. Um, so yeah, check them out, bloodshedfarms.com. Uh, you can look me up if you want. Um, Grin Creepy on Instagram, Facebook. Um, that's pretty much it. And I'll probably be seeing you around somewhere. I'm not saying when, where, but I'll probably be popping up soon. Oh, very, very nice. Very nice. So it sounds like someone's got a plan. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you to the team at Field of Screens, all of you. The media night is such a great night. We have such a blast. And we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We love what you guys do. And we're so happy to just sing your praises over and over and over again. If nothing brings us more joy. Um, I'm going to have them on the show soon. I'm going to have a couple more people on the show soon. If you're in the haunt industry and want to be on, feel free to hit us up at HalloweenHaunts365.com. We're on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch. If it's social, we're on there. Just reach out to us any way possible. We'll work on a time and day. It's very easy to do, right, Grant? absolutely yeah they just click a button and boom we're a podcast I love it so that's all we have for you tonight we have some more reviews coming up um the next couple of weeks are a little off just because certain things aren't adding up and this weekend's it's a little tough to find a haunted attraction but october 1st we will be at reaper's revenge october 2nd we will be at freightland October 3rd, we will make our way up to Brighton Asylum. So we have a lot of work coming our way. We also have to fit in a trip to um, Haunted Overload. It's a six-hour ride. It looks worth it, but it's all about timing and what other haunts we have to put off to go that six hours. I mean, that's like three haunts. It could be. (laughs) But we're going to see what happens. We're playing it by ear this year because we had a little iffy start to the season we usually have a nice schedule all planned out but that's all we have for you here at halloween 365.com 
where every day is haunt season. Make sure you like, subscribe, email us, come say hi, even if you see us out. Stop by. We love to hear from you. Guys, have a great night. Bye. Thank you. All right, guys. Stay creepy. Thanks for watching.